one of these two Canadian teams will be crowned Eastern Conference champion and will go on to become the first Canadian team to play in MLS Cup. Seattle Sounders await the winner tonight. Kosu Piatti is out to the left, Bates is trying to track back. And Kosu finds Adoro, it's Adoro! Dominic Adoro scores again! Jimmy Cos ball in, out to the header! Josie Altano cannot stop scoring right now! Five playoff games, five playoff goals! And now it's played into space for Morrow to chip this one into the edge of the box. Hagler with the header! Nick Hagler climbing high! It's 3 2 for TFC! And it is tied 5 5 on aggregate! Makes a short with a good ball into the middle! A stopping header! And it's in! Shreds off the challenge of Cabrera. Ricketts is in there. It's Tosin Ricketts. It's two goals in two minutes. And the Canadian puts Toronto FC on the verge of an MLS Cup. That has to be one of, if not the best, two-legged series of all time in MLS history. It's certainly in the top two or three. I expect to be watching this game in 20 years on like an wow. MLS channel or something. Like MLS Classics, they're going to play this whole yeah. thing and do the quick throw. I mean, that's how good it was. And I muted my microphone. That was uh, <laughs> that was lost to the world. Yeah, that was a, that. It was you know beautiful. What? I was, was I was really over here pantomiming. I kept giving you that signal. Good. Good. Could matters. you feel the energy? Yes. Oh my god, I, I was about that. that. Yeah, I got the goosebumps. I was, I was trying to I was... smile when I heard some good stuff in my mind. Uh, I was like, oh, that was good. Oh smile. my <laughs> god. Oh man, I was reveling in the uh, in the prediction that this was going to be an MLS Classics remix. And of course, the producer is getting in the chat saying, "Classic Weeby right now." Ah. <laughs> Welcome yep. on this Let's Wednesday. Start. That's about how it's going for me these days. Nick Hagland, <laughs> Dom Maduro, Stephen Badish are here to relive the 2016 Eastern Conference Championship leg two. And Dom, leg one was crazy. So let's refresh people on what they missed because what they missed to get things started was, uh, I don't know, let's call it a faulty measuring tape. That's what I'm going to call it. You know, that thing was just off a little bit and we had a delay to this game and then boom, impact out of the blocks. Tell me about leg one. Yeah, um, listen, I, I didn't measure the whole field. Listen, I just, I'm a player, I just play. <laughs> uh, so I think before warm up, you know, they came to us, blah, blah, blah. The rest were, I don't know, in a huddle, something wasn't right. So we didn't they know. They told you so, the day before that that was going to happen. Come on, don't lie to us. <laughs> How would I they, know, they, man? They I told wasn't... <laughs> us to take it easy on the warm ups. They're like, hey, oh, we're going to have to They go were back like, this is a tactic. We two. were sitting yeah, in the tactic. locker room just ready to go, and now 30 more minutes we have to see, wait. See, guys, so right now this is 2v1, so already, like, I'm losing <laughs> this begins. battle. So <laughs> just bear with me. All right, Montreal go ahead. Fans. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, I mean, so. So obviously, you know, they fixed it, uh, but um, listen, we we're up three up at the end of the day. Yeah, you yeah, three up three Um And listen, soccer is a game of chance. Everybody knows it. Um, you know, Toronto at that time, they were really good. They just had a stroke comeback. That's all. We, we just, we blew it. Everybody knows it. Listening to the locker room was devastating, but um, listen, we came up strong in the end. I want to believe it was just the idea at the end of the day. You guys did it to him the year before. Remember, Toronto's first ever appearance, 3-0 impact. So the impact did do it the year before in the knockout round with Drogba. But, Steve, I, I'm curious. When you guys go down 3-0, at Stade Olympique, and that place is crazy in big moments. I've been there for Champions League finals. I've been there for playoff games. What was going through your, your collective minds? Yeah, I mean, there was so much going through our minds. First of all, the year before, you know, they, Montreal knocks out TFC 3 nothing, And so... Personally, I'm you know I'm being brought in to to help the defense, and we give up three goals. So I'm thinking, wow, uh, I kind of blew that one. Um, but then you know we do end up coming back and getting a couple goals uh, in a hostile environment in front of what it was a 66,000 fans. Um, and so even though we were going back to Toronto down three two, 
we kind of felt like we got all the momentum. Um, it almost felt like, uh, you know, you know, in the locker room on the bus ride, like, man, we kind of felt like we won, even though, you know, we were down 3-2. So um, definitely going into that game uh, with the whole line situation, having to go back in the locker room and sit for an hour, it was difficult um, on that turf, you know, where it's like you have two by two pieces of turf laid down for the entire field. So you can literally yeah. just pick up uh, a piece also of turf. Also couldn't hear so the yourself whole, the, at all. Like if you were sitting right next to me, you couldn't hear a soul. Yeah, it, well, it was that, insane. So That kind of tells you how, how the Montreal fans are compared to Toronto fans, you know. You just love like that. Just because you guys and are in a dome, that, all huh? the noise just stays in there. You, it just it echoes for matter. hours, hours around. Yeah. Of course, you can see oh, the red yeah, seats here. Noise. This is the second leg. We're about yeah, a minute empty. in right now, Greg Fanny. Yeah, look, I mean, I was at uh, the, the one of the best atmospheres, if not the best uh, atmosphere I've ever been at, is that second leg against Club America for the Montreal Impact in the Champions League final. I mean, it was it was unbelievable. Like, everybody coming on the subway, coming in, the whole place being packed. Stade Olympics is crazy, but BMO Field is... It's no slouch. Uh, before we get to some action, because it is a little quiet at this point, Nick, I want to yeah. know where you guys were at as we start to see you come on the ball here. Good timing for me. Like, Toronto coming into this game, but not just coming into this game. You'd been there for a couple years at this point, and the goal was MLS Cup. It was to make it there, and you'd been knocked out early the year before, and you're on the brink in 2016. Take me inside that locker room, inside your mind. Yeah, I think. Obviously, we had just... Or three two, and then you have a, a long break. You had Thanksgiving break. I actually went to like a cabin in between with Drew Moore and just to get away from everything and regroup. And that week, I mean, we were on the training field like an extra hour running through the same place, same place, and we had a down pat. And we felt like, you know, if anyone had told me that we had like the last game, you know, our last game of the season or what could have been the last game of the season, that we would have to win at, at home. I think anyone would have, would have taken that on our team. And so for us to get the chance to be at home, to play the last, the potentially the last game of the season, um, we felt really uh, confident, actually. Like to, to, to come and just win, we had to win. That's it. Win the game. And in front of our fans on a, on a night at BMO, I feel like we'd take that 100% of the time. So we were feeling good, actually. What was the, what was the game plan? You know, Beta, feel free to chime in. Like, what did you guys feel you could exploit from this impact team that did have Drogba on the bench? This wasn't this wasn't 2015 marauding, taking everybody down, Didier Drogba. But it's still a very yeah. good Montreal team that won like one. What was the plan? For sure. I set mean, we pieces, we worked on we're... set pieces over and over again. Yeah. Um, try, try, try to stop Dominic yeah, Duro. We would try to... We would, we would try to bring them out of their block. You know, Montreal was known for just sitting in deep and countering, and so we were going to do our best to try and, you know, bring draw them out a little bit, make some space for Seba and Josie, and see what, what kind of magic we could do, make. Yeah. Now, obviously, Montreal was uh, super productive on their counters. You know, they had the speed up top with Mancuso, with Dom, uh, Piotti with, you know, his trickery and how skilled he is. So we knew being at home we would be – having a lot of the ball and exposing ourselves, which kind of fits into their game plan. But um, I think we were up for the task and, uh, you know, they were going to have their chances. Uh, obviously in this game, it's a high scoring game, but um, we were okay with that. You know, it was a, it was a definitely a heavyweight, one of the greatest two legged series in MLS history. So um, if, yeah, if not the, the game plan arguably the greatest, I mean, Dax McCarty said it, you know, uh, just to throw in, um, come into the game, we, Toronto was hot, you know, and we knew they were going to play on um, 3-5-2. I remember that. And I remember one of the interviews, I was like, I dare you guys to play 3-5-2. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> we were red hot on the counter. Everybody knew that. I mean, Piatti, Piatti is arguably, I think, one of the most underrated number 10 player in MLS. Uh, you know, Mateo was hot. I mean, I was fast and hot. So our whole idea was to, you know, hit him on the counter. And when they decided to play a uh, three-five-two, it was like, okay, all right, let's get it on. So we practiced like literally every day on how to just get behind them. And I was telling Nick, um, Hagelin, and um, before this whole thing, that's exactly what happened. When Patrice get it, just turn up, play dumb, get in. That's exactly what happened that first goal. Patrice had the ball, I just made a turn. Mara was all the way up there, zoom, play ball through right there, go. Man, I wish anything in my life could be described. I do, I believe, best MLS final 
I think there is. Yeah, I mean, this was, I mean, I, I remember being in the MLS offices, like, with Dax and his ridiculous Christmas sweater, I think it was, <laughs> yeah. jumping up and down, was, like, literally awesome. jumping on a table and just being like, are you kidding me? Multiple times during the season. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, because you, you played for both of these teams. There's a rivalry I, I here that I think I, we don't really I don't, understand. I, I don't remember playing for Toronto that much, but okay, <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go with it. Look, but they're, look, they're, this rivalry, you mentioned most underrated number 10s in MLS. Like, this rivalry yeah. might be the most underrated rivalry. Um, talk to me about both sides of it. Like, you're in Toronto. It wasn't as long as – it was, like, a little less than a year. But then you had these times in Montreal and these clashes. What did it mean to both sides? Like, what did it mean to this Montreal team, to those fans? Could you feel sort of the, the gravity of this game, this series, this rivalry? Yeah, first of all, I mean, I, I, would, I would say that, let's be honest, we, we like the only, I mean, I saw three teams in, in Canada, and, and sometimes we feel like, and I think, you know, the guys who agree with me, we don't get that much publicity when it comes to teams in MLS, you know, compared to teams in, um, the, you know, the states like LA, you know, New York, all of that. So when the two of us were going to the final, we knew it was going to be big for us, especially in Canada. Um, I mean, playing for Toronto, I was, I mean, like I said, I wasn't there for that long, so... I didn't know how much the rivalry was, how you know crazy it was at the end of the day. I only played one game, I remember, in uh, Montreal. But then when I went to the other side, which was the good side, that's when I found out it was really you know something something crazy. Like it, it's just the fans are really into it. Um, so I, I kind of like I, I think that's when I, I started getting a little bit of love hate from some of the Toronto fans, which is okay. It's all part of the game. I love it. Uh, but going to Montreal, that's when I found out you know Canadians they pretty much they want. They want every city to be like we are the best, you know, in, in Canada. And, and, and that was playing um, Toronto was, was one of those, just a battle of who is the best. And listen, it, like you said, this, this was epic. So many goals. Best of all time. Yeah, I mean, the number of times that Toronto plays Montreal in a, in a calendar year is, you know, you see him at least, you usually see him three times during the season. You'll see him in the yeah. Canadian Cup for two legs. You see him in yeah, playoffs. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> you know, this, you play him six to eight times, and there's only just more blood boiling every time. And when, especially when, like, there's big things on the line. Like, this will be the first Canadian team in MLS Cup. Like, there was so much on the line in the previous year with losing to 3-0. Uh, you know, and every time you step on the field against Montreal, there was definitely going to be a fight or people getting together or – words church for sure um you know there's just it's just pure hatred between the two teams who's the biggest chirper in this game who's the who's the person that you're hearing from the most mm. uh michael bradley i think <laughs> been, i think he's, he been, just... he's been known to make his opinion now uh, listen he's a great player i love him uh you know nothing there but he will just complain about everything to the ref you know i think i think that's his way of just trying to get to you you know get under your skin and you know nick said it he does get under your skin with that you know he's always yelling to the ref you know for the ref to like always call games or whatever you know calls on the other side stuff like that and we hated that he used to do it so we should like try to get back at him you know get in his face but I mean, he does that well. Let's give him that. Um, he's in your head he's... right now. I can, he, I can look <laughs> at you. I see it. <laughs> Child, please. By the way, this game has been crazy physical from the jump. I mean, you have Lawrence Simon basically with the two-hand tackle, and then this is a, this is a collision. Like, I, I shivered if, when if, this If there was yeah, VAR, that would be, be a red card, no? No. Look, I'm, I'm Mr. Instant Replay, so let me get another look, look at, at this look one. Look at Dom going right after Michael. Look at Dom. I got to throw in VR over here. Just... But VAR because also has to take a feel of the game, you know? Like, yeah, you see where Michael go, Bradley is right a, there? If you give a red card right now, it's not going to be yeah, good that, for the game. I, no I, one yeah, wants that's that. That's good. That, that would have. Woo. Oh, yeah. That... Whoa, that's, that's Josie, too. That's like all monster right there. Know... It's like getting hit by a linebacker right there. He's looking at the ball. Oof. He's looking at the ball. He didn't extend the arm. It looks yeah, awful. Right? Yeah, it looks yeah. terrible because, like, Bernadello he's comes down boy. so hard. He is a big guy. It makes it worse because he's so big. I th yeah, I'd be okay with so... the yellow there. Yeah, I wouldn't do I think, a red, though. I don't think that's a red. That's the no, official um, instant sorry, replay Dom. take. That's only speaking for myself. Hey, right? I'm just saying, maybe, man. May <laughs> maybe in some parallel universe. universe. <laughs> I don't, I don't you know, know how he know. comes back on the field after this. I'm like... I thought he was right? out cold for a second, but yeah, it, that's, that, that, that just shows you how much really. these games mean to the players, right? Just put me on the field. 
And he was a feisty player too. That guy was like a bulldozer. You know, he always reminded yeah. me of Tevez. He works so hard. He's like buzzing everywhere. You get the ball, you try to dribble past him. You better watch for your legs. So, I mean, for him I mean, to look like at, go look down at Mike like that, getting in your ear right now, Dom. Oh my god! <laughs> I was, I was, Dom, I was trying you, to. What are you guys talking about right there? Please tell us. Really, Mike is probably like, oh, Dom, shut up, man. Come on, you know that was a foul. Stuff like that. I'm like, no, Mike, it's not. And he'll go to Rev like, come on, Rev, you saw that. You know, stuff like that. You know, that's that's that was his style. Everybody knew that. Come on. Everybody in the league knows how Michael Bradley is. You know, he tried to get into your head with or get into the 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 Rev's head, you know. But like I said, I love him, you know, uh, not, nothing wrong with that. Great guy. Steven, you came in this year and you, you mentioned that you kinda came in to help this team get over the hump. When you walked into this team, what did you think? You have Michael, you have Seba, you have uh, you know, Josie, you have Nick Hagland. I mean, it's a squad. Nick Hagland, yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey. you should start with Nick Hagland. I mean, I yeah, saw who? that name and I was like, all right, I need to get there. I'm signing up uh, for this. Future I'm signing is up for it right here. Where's my, where, where do I sign? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, 2015, I think TFC gave up the most goals in the league, but they also scored um, the most goals. So uh, I knew if I can go over there and help them on the defensive end, uh, it's a good combination if you can keep the goals for, but take down the goals against. So thankfully, I think we were the second best defensive record this year. Um, and, you know, obviously this game doesn't show it because uh, there's a ton of goals, but that was kind of my mindset going into it. Like, you know, Piotti is an unbelievable player. Dom said it, you know, underrated number 10. Um, you ask anyone in MLS, he's one of the one of the best number 10s in MLS history, but I kind of, I didn't, I don't think I went forward as much. It was kind of just watch Piotti. Don't go too far from them because, you know, Montreal likes to counter. So always be kind of close. So he still gets away from me. I know times, but for the most part, that was kind of my objective. What's the, what's your, like, as you enter a game with Nacho, what are you thinking as far as, you know, keeping him in, in front of you, hopefully, and just overall your game plan to slow him down because he's such a huge part of what all these Montreal teams did over this course of about four and a half years. Yeah, I mean, a big style for us that year, just having more on myself kind of get high and wide and uh, get depth on the field or width on the field just uh, to create space for our midfielders. And when, when Piotti's on the field, even the whole Montreal team, because they have that speed where they want you to kind of overexpose yourself. Um, if you give them too much room, they're gone, and you don't have much time to recover. So, uh, you know, I knew I'd be putting, you know, our three center backs essentially 1v1. So um, rather than going further up the field and getting too uh, far from uh, Piotti, I kind of just stayed next to him. I wouldn't overlap as much. I wouldn't uh, make runs unless it was totally on. Um, so the, the whole risk factor... It definitely played a part in that. There's that set piece. There's the choreograph yeah. right there. Set up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, listen, I, 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 I'm a, I mean, I'm oh, I mean, oh. Montreal for oh, life, you, but I got I, I got to yeah, give, I got to give yeah, Jovin Kudai yeah. respect. You know, that guy, that guy was so good at what he does. You know, he, he, he was so good. Like he was so good for, 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 for being a, number 10 pretty much everything that he does um you know again respect you know uh to him not to the whole toronto but just to you know, he, he, he did he did his job bro. you, you got to respect the guy for that the guy the guy really could play the guy really could play i mean nick nick mentioned it earlier but we really worked a ton on set pieces and there's a, a perfect example we of just uh, the runs that the guys make and the timing and all that stuff so we knew it was going to be a key part of this this matchup just because when we do have the ball they defend with so many numbers so there really isn't that much space to break them down so you have to take advantage of those set pieces that you get i'm reminded of the air i feel like haglin nickname right now yeah (laughs) no you don't don't get enough credit i know these guys talk about number 10s but you're you're uh hops you don't get credit for your hops yeah dude sorry should have really played into air haglin man you had a brand yeah, going. I should have played like into it. Air Hagman. It would have been great for the last dance. I gotta like put myself in. Oh know. my god! <laughs> I missed it. I missed it. Oh, oh that, that, that that would that would. I did play a game with an IV last year. I got really? the flu. You're cramping? Or I got what? No, I had the flu. I was yeah. throwing up all night. We were playing Philadelphia. It was one of the coldest games. It was last year. We were playing Philly at home, and I had an IV in my right before the game, like. 
30, 30 minutes before the game, just sitting in the locker, just like Kendall was hurt. So there was no one else to not go in. That's a problem. So air haggling works. It's all did good. It, did it work? Yeah, How'd but... you guys do? <laughs> no, we lost 2 0. It was the worst. It was the top three, one of the worst games in weather wise ever. Oh, Rain man. coming sideways, freezing cold. But that's not, that, yeah. that's for a later date. It was funny, like, for us, I know that, like, Beta and Zav stayed mostly inside to, to protect uh, Piotti, but we would send Justin forward a lot. Uh, I can't believe he was kind of the way we were attacking right it. I know, it right? I remember watching that. I was like, no, don't go in, don't go in, don't go in. Because <laughs> he, he was on fire this year. He had, like, five goals. You're thinking, oh, yeah. inside the six, he's for sure shooting. Yeah. It's funny to watch this game and then how this team transfers to 2017 in terms of style of play. Mm -hmm. um, you yeah. Know, a lot. This, this, this team specifically, we played, you know, we were aggressive. We pressed high. We uh oh, oh guys, guys, wait there's, for it. Wait for it. It's oh, coming. It's coming. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. The crowd. Look at that. <laughs> Yo, do, do you know how um, – I remember after the game, I sat down. You know how many – I wouldn't say like hate, but like how Toronto, Toronto fans really just got to me. Like they used that meme to like literally just get me. Yo, they went hard on me. They were like, oh, you know, here you go, you know, this and that. Obviously, I can't say stuff like that. But they used that goal. They just used it on me, bro. It was crazy. I still loved it anyway. But um, listen, that you, you guys let it open. What a touch, you know, by we, the we, way. I mean, oh, there's magic good Piatti. <laughs> Good run, good touch, good finish. Uh, we, we, you know, as part of what we're doing, we used to work on that. We used, we worked on between um, dealing with your left back and, and your right back, you know, between those and the three guys in the middle because we knew that's where the space was. We couldn't go through Drew Moore or, um, I don't know, the other guy that you had, you know, sorry, excuse that me. But, Nick? yeah, all we had to do was just go through around, you know, you guys, you know, on the left side and the right side and, guys anytime you guys if you watch anytime you guys give us that chance kind of punish you for that and we worked on that for sure. situation for, for a while you know and um at, at this point i remember at this point i was like there's no way we're losing this game i'm like we got this we got this and and i mean you could feel it you could feel everybody like even on the bench you could feel the players like looking at each other's like this is it this is it and you know when i remember when josie equalized it was like a little bit of a panic button but you know, the rest, as you guys know, it was history. But from here, I knew we we're looking at each other like, this is it. This is ours. This is ours. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like for us, we were still like, it, this is a long game. Like, even in the last yeah. game, we were down 3-0, we could score. I think we were just like, you know, this is a 90-minute game. We've got Seba and Josie. Any, they can make magic at any moment. And, you know, for us... We we were gonna we were gonna score a goal. It wasn't like we weren't gonna score a goal. And so as yeah. long as we came and equalized and didn't give up the next goal, that uh, you know we were gonna be definitely have a shot at this. Is that the a second yellow? Was kind of, yeah. Is that is not that a second yellow? yellow? I mean, that the is ball's a rolling out of play. Yellow. Ball's rolling out of play. Hundred percent. I saw all ball, man. I saw him got all ball. All ball. <laughs> all ball. I think if all he doesn't ball. have that first yellow, it's pretty obvious that's gonna be his first. Yeah, I have sure. no idea what you're talking about. I, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I just saw him get all ball. Typical, you know, see my tackle. You guys know that. Slight yeah. tackle. <laughs> I was going to say, he's taken down somebody with two hands. He has done that all in the first 30 <laughs> minutes of the game. So yeah. really, really living on the edge there, Laurel Simon. Yeah, at this point, you, you could tell, like, you know, the stadium was really electrifying. Like, you know, Toronto just wanted to get at it. The, every ball, throw in, whatever. You guys were, like, so determined to get, like, that first goal, that equalizer oh. right there, you know? <laughs> there are definitely Yo, I some I, big collisions I, I, in this game. I, I, <laughs> That's I, a great Will Johnson tackle swear, right I, I, there. I, I, I thought he was even going to call guy. PK. I saw PK my ass. I'm like, no, no, no. Oh, okay, okay. That's a ball. That's a fuck. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> nerves were like that high in the game, man. Yeah. You know, it's Ooh. it's funny because I think that first goal uh, against us kind of calmed our nerves a little bit. Uh, because going into that game, you're only down a, a goal. So yeah. you don't need it to be high scoring. But I think once they score that goal, we're like, okay, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's attack. Um, and, you know, thankfully it works out. But 
Uh, up until that point, I think we were a little bit conservative before they scored. Yeah. Did you guys feel a lot Played of pressure? Played a lot of Toronto? long balls. Yeah, a lot of long balls. Did you feel what pressure? You? How, how much pressure did you feel here? Because, I mean, I think, you know, the next year it would happen for you in terms of MLS Cup, but it hadn't at this point. This was really just the second time in the playoffs. You were trying to establish yourselves, but you had, if not one of, the best squad in the league. Like, how much pressure was on this game for you guys within not just the locker room, but a market that really does care? I don't think there was much pressure for, for this one. I think you mentioned it in the next year, with all the expectations, uh, there comes that pressure. But this year... We were kind of really finding our, our, our form and our identity. Um, and so this was more so just uh, kind of revenge for the year before. 2015, Montreal knocked out TFC. So this was more so to get back at Montreal uh, and build on that rivalry. Yeah, for sure. I think the pressure was more on, on the on the Montreal-Toronto rivalry in terms of losing 3-0. Like, you, we don't want that to happen again. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, I think I think every time that we hit, like went down, like we go down three zero, and we basically are like, screw it, like if we don't go for it right now, we're gonna lose. So we might as well we might as well send you know, send everyone, press hard, go for it, and you know at least at the end of the day, if we if we go down, we went down swinging, and it wasn't like something timid. And I feel like that was kind of our game plan through the whole playoffs. Nerves in this game, man. But yeah, the I margin mean, for error is so small in these games. Just look how many players they had in that box. I think I counted yeah. eight of their players in their box. And it's obviously, I mean, we, we were go up, and 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 I remember practice. You know, like during the whole time, the idea was obviously hit you guys on the counter, and for us to be one zero up, it was like perfect. You know, I mean, our plan is working. You know, we up one zero, and aggregate what was it was it four two and. Just exactly where we want you guys, you know. Just sit deep, you know. We'll get you guys. We know. We knew. Once we get on the counter, we could just outrun you guys. That was it. I mean, Piatti would do his best to do whatever he does. I would just gun it straight, and you know, Mateo would just be right there to tap it in. So we, we were we were actually okay with this situation, uh, you know. We we're actually okay just sitting in and let you guys do your thing. Did Drog does Drogba not start this match, Dom, because of that game plan, or is it? Um, health wise, do you remember? Um, I think I think um, if uh, you know, I, I speak for I won't say most coaches, but most of the coaches when when a team wins a game, they kind of want to start with the same lineup because of the chemistry. You know, mm -hmm. prior to that game, I think uh, you know Mateo scored, I scored, so I, I don't think I don't know. I would say it wasn't fair to start drop at that point. You know, because M Mateo was still on fire. You know, so I think um, it was the best decision of the coach to. Air Haglund. Yes. Bam. I can't oh. believe that. Yo, this Nick, was... Nick, that should have been your goal. It's oh, my... I count it as an assist. That should have uh, counted. No one counts it. No one counts it as an assist, but... I mean, it's yeah, but you know. The people that remember it, it, they know. They know. You were right there. They know. Is that play for you? Like, you guys worked on these set pieces. Who's that for? So we were just going to... By like, of Two and three. So... Uh, Josie and Zab would usually go in the front and then the other three would be in the back and you just kind of like pick for each other. So Armando was supposed to go in front of me, then then myself, then Drew behind me um, and just put a ball into the area and hopefully it finds one of us. Well, even if Busha touched it, I'm sure Drew Mo would have tapped it in. You guys were like yeah. all over the box over there. <laughs> you got to give uh, so Teslov some credit for his creativity on some of these set pieces. For sure. At this sure point, any time that Toronto had the ball, it felt like, it felt like, um, you know, the whole stadium was just on fire. Like every any time you guys had the ball, it was like a counter attack. It could be a possession in the back. It still felt like a counter attack. Yeah, at this yeah. point, it was yeah. Just what do like, you? Once the goal went in, we were like, "This is this is this is it." Like it gave you guys confidence, yeah. huh? Yeah, for sure. I think Let's I think here. so. I think it it would have been I'm a different sorry. story if you had gone. Armando has he to go down say. right here. I'm sorry, but. He kind oh, come of. Come on, his hands kind up. Of, I mean, the kind he saw it coming. It's not going to happen. Is that a goal again? Oh. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, that was, that was, was yours, Nick. That was yours. Deal. I'll take it because I was on Armando's screen. First if Armando, goal of the if Armando is on screen, we'll give it to him, okay? But <laughs> I'm yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. No, bad. Get him, Nick. 
Are you that might have been crush, t- 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 crush everybody in sight. <laughs> Well, Hassoon come. Uh, Hassoon would always come from the side and jump sideways, so there was no yeah. real way to like time the jump with him. So we would either have like Will Johnson come across and pick him, uh, but you know he jumped so high, so I was just going up with him. I don't even get the ball there because I'm just assuming he's going to time it right. So I'm just going to get over his head. So if he flicks it, it's going to flick into my face essentially, like right there. <laughs> oh but my for- god! I feel like it was all planned. Poor I mean, Will. He was a best oh, jump by the Yeah, that's that's the spot. Like, Will that's comes. Cr- that's all right. It's part of the game. If you're going up, you're going up. Uh, I just play. Was just. a good pick by Will. Guys, 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 get up, get up. Let's do it. 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 What was, what Greg was your question? Greg was there? jacked up here. Doing a lot of yelling in this yeah, game. He's fired up. It's funny. The, Greg on the sideline versus Greg in practice are two different Greg. It's different, he's right? He talks so, he talk so. When I was in Toronto, he talks so slow, so soft. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's calm yeah. and everything. Everything is methodical the game's like, in training and in games, he's getting after it. Yeah. yeah not even a foul. See? Not even yeah. a foul. But, Dom doesn't agree. You see him throw him up the hands. Of course. Of, look at that. That's bad sportsmanship right there. But anyway. Good sportsmanship. We gave you the ball back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. FIFA fair play. Let's go with that. <laughs> look, Josie gave it out further. And you guys you guys went up 20 yards. You call that fair Listen, play? Listen, we were under pressure the whole time. We felt like, you know, <laughs> come on. Like you said, at, at that point, momentum was changing in the, in, the, in the whole situation. So you guys, like, literally just gunned us the whole time. So we just had to find a way to just, you know, get some rest at a time, you know, regroup, and then <laughs> just probably waste time. just go. You're going to try and waste time for six Well, like I said, minutes. listen, we, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. We, we had a game plan. Believe it or not, we had a game plan um, to, like, the 65th minute or to the 70th minute. We had a game plan. You guys had a game plan. We had ours, too. We're just trying to execute. You got to think about it. We, we didn't go in trying to just sit in the whole game. We knew exactly what we were going to do, uh, like, maybe on the 60th, 70th minute. We knew what was going to happen. Things just change. That's all. We knew exactly what was going to happen on the 70th minute. You can ask any player on that team. We had everything lined up. If it's tied 70th minute, we're doing this. And then I think, yeah. you know, the, the third goal came somewhere around the 70th, whatever, 72nd minute, and, and it kind of like changed everything, you know? So, yeah, we had a game plan, Nick. <laughs> I didn't say you had a game plan. I just didn't know, like, <laughs> trying to stall at, after 30 minutes was your game plan. No, we just had like, to find a way to trying to just... stall in the fifth to... minute, man. Come on. Oh, please. Come on, man. It wasn't even like was... that. Listen, we knew you guys were going to have the momentum. We, we knew, you know, we were coming to your home, oh, so it was going to be no chance. Oh, yeah. That was a handball for sure. That ball, no, that uh, ball listen, was a Hassoon, He pled guilty. Hassoon, he... Listen, Hassoon <laughs> could drop... Hasun could drop a medal on his chest and it wouldn't bounce. Like, he is that good. Any air ball, actually anybody, he could just, he has a way of doing it, just like lay like that, and that ball would literally rest on his, like a baby. So, nah, he would never do that. Well, all all even I know if he is did. 40 minutes in, there's been some questionable calls, uh, and you guys have been the <laughs> beneficiary of them. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no, there hasn't been any home field advantage yet. Have you guys seen any? No, I think at this point I mean, it was really other, than that the field, other than that the field's lines were, were good. No, not <laughs> Wow. I, I love the way okay, why, why did we do this? Why couldn't we get a, another like Montreal player, you know, in here? Why does it have to be two against one? I feel like <laughs> no matter what I say, I'm just you know guys, let's be fair over here, okay? Help me out. All right. I mean Something I'm not gonna that. like agree with you, but I'll try to be <laughs> kinder to you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Uh, at this point, it was it was it was more like you could see the field so far away because we were so deep, you know, defending, and it was yeah. just it, it was just crazy. I remember you get the ball and you're just trying to run, and all you could see was, you know, your goalie all the way on the other side, and your head you were like, damn it, you know, what is yeah, happening? Take me some time. See, see. Yeah, it's like you got it, and, it yeah. and all you see. It's just, it's like it was so far to run, you know. It was so far, and then we lose it, and then we have to come back. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking, keep Dom in front of me. Don't let him get by. 
I don't care yeah. if you dribble all the way to the 18. Just don't don't go by me. <laughs> uh, this was the good game, man. I uh, I remember. I, I don't even think after the game I was that. I mean, it was a good game. Obviously, I was hurt, you know, for not winning it for the city of Montreal. But I mean, it took a while. But at the end of the day, I just knew we played arguably one of the best games, you know, with all the goals. Think about it. If this was um, American football, that would be like touchdown for touchdown for touchdown. Oh, this was the goal. This is oh, the my goal. God. That's crazy yeah. that 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 dinky long ball I played turns into no this. because uh, oh. I think Victor was trying to hit a, a backpack and he mishit it. Oh, he mishit it. And that's crazy. Yeah, he mishit I didn't it. Know that and the and up was like that. Yeah, yeah he mishit it. I remember so well. Josie this right this now, game exactly where to go. We had Josie. Yeah, I mean, w- block him. Like I said, it, it was just meant for you guys. You know, this we play him, is uh, yeah. This is not me, run by our coaches. Play. Yeah, Josie okay. Seba goes up to Josie and says, "Go near post." And that's what happened. Bam. It's an unbelievable finish. The angle was crazy. When yeah, the ball they, came I mean, in, I was he, like, no, we wasted this one. <laughs> and then yeah, that angle was there. just, it, it was it's just crazy. How far I is mean, it you in do, front you, of the near you, post? You do that again 10 times and you probably won't even hit, you know, the frame or anything. You probably hit it sure. on the outside. For sure. So, um, the, the whole, the, we, I mean, defensively too, we, we obviously had, I think, I want to believe it's, if it's Marcus or Siman in the front line because, you know, they were good in the air. So we're like, anything that comes in, what was it, yeah, Mateo, anything that comes in, you crash it. Because we, from, from video, we knew Josie wasn't always going forward like that. You know, he make his runs in the oh. back or sometimes in the middle because he was big in the air. So we knew like, you know, we got it covered and I think you guys just changed it for some reason. He was able to, you know, just get in front and then hit yeah, the Seba, ball. Seba changed it. You, you have to oh, give Seba credit on that one. Because I think Josie typically runs behind Mancuso at the he, near He post. does. Yeah, yeah. So, we, so we had that cover. That, that's why Mateo like, hey, was right there. Run in front of him. Yeah. So yeah, it's a heads up so... play by Seba for sure. Th- that guy's a no, good player. Like I said, uh, you know, I, I will give him that, man. He he is he is so, he is just good. He is good. I mean, you can't, you can't even lie about it. That guy is that good. What's the balance between running the plays you've worked on and and having sort of an audible like that? Like, is that does that happen often, or was that sort of out of the blue? Like, oh, what's happening? Why are we changing up? I think when you have players with experience like that, you just trust them, right? So, you know, I think the coaches give players the freedom to to kind of go with the flow of things. So, I think in that situation, Seba saw something and he told Josie, and Josie knows that you know, to trust him and all right, I'm going to do that. And it worked out in that instance. So I just think, yeah, I will, just uh, trust for the players. Just, just to add to what you said, I remember a game against um, New York FC. Um, you know, normally I'm always on top of the box, you know, deal with the second balls or whatever. And we were down one zero. Drogba came in and then he was like, Drew, go first ball. That's what he said. And that, that was in my position. He's like, I'm going to hit the ball, just run first ball. He told me, you know, Yongo, Literally, like, 80, 89th minute or something like that. Hit the ball, run first, ball, go. So, like you said, sometimes, you know, those guys, they, they see things, you know. That's what, that's what makes them such great players. They, sometimes they're just in the heat of the moment. They just see something that we all don't see. And those guys, when they call it out, you better listen. Because, you know, if sometimes it doesn't happen, you, you're going to get it. And you know that, you know, they, they know the game better than we do. So, yeah, sometimes I they change. We, a, have, I, we have certain situations, sometimes they change it. For sure. I think I, I there's a video of Greg when we get the corner kick saying, don't change the play. Don't change the play. <laughs> and then he's going, it's like, yeah, yeah. And then they right? scored. And he's like, yeah. Coach would take a credit for that, obviously. I mean, and they also take the credit. Uh, I mean, when they lose, they, they also have to take it too. So either sure, way, it's sure. it. It's it. Go what was it? If you audible and it works, you're a hero. If you don't, yeah. if you audible and it doesn't work, then you're gonna get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Before we get to halftime, Dom, what was? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I need more time on this one. I want to talk 2015 impact Drogba's arrival, but uh, we'll we'll hold off on that for a little bit. Okay. Who did you guys feel like was was sort of a, a de facto leader on the field for this Toronto team? Is it Mike or is it is it Seba at times? Like, or is it just kind of rotating around? It's definitely Mike, um, like on and off the field. I feel like he was the leader, the engine of the team, um, knew how to get people going, like, you know, 
certain guys in certain positions. He knew exactly what to say to get them to, to be in the right mind. Um, I think in playoffs, like Josie and Seba, they flip, the, they flip a switch. Like in regular season, they're great. But when they're sprinting and pressing and running, I think that really puts, uh, you know, for us, it, you know, encourages us to keep going. You know, these guys would run as fast as they could, close down defenders. Um, and I think during the playoffs, like those are their two, no, there's no other two players I'd want on the field, um, you know, playing. 2 1 at halftime, Toronto FC, bringing it to, uh, and even, even Steven here. They got the away goals, so Montreal at halftime. Got to figure something out in the second half. We'll get that in just a second. Uh, this is obviously all part of Audi MLS Cup playoffs week. We got rivalry matches, excuse me, rivalry matches all week long. You can get those listings in MLSsoccer.com. But on Friday, a little, uh, a little back and forth in the Atlantic Cup. Fans on both sides, James Lambert and Brent Gamut. Of course, Matt Doyle used to play the trumpet for the Metro Stars back in the day, so he has a little skin in the game too, and... David Goss has seen these things firsthand. 4 p.m. Eastern, just like this one, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, MLSsoccer.com. You can check MLSsoccer.com for the listings of all the other robbery matches going on. Uh, and also, MLS Idol, Thursday. I was supposed to be on last week. Ooh. I got cut, guys. I'm just saying. I got cut. My my talent <laughs> did not make the – it did not make the sort of like the, the expectation, which tells you how good some of these guys are. Bojan, Griffin Dorsey, Connor Sparrow. And uh, Ta Brian Anunga over there in Nashville. Looks like he's spinning plates, so that looks somewhat dangerous. Anybody seen this so far? No, I mean, no. I'm enjoying it. Susanna's a killer. I haven't. My, my mom loves it. She tells me all about it. She's a big, <laughs> big fan of Diego Valeri and has been singing green and gold, green and gold. And I'm like, come on, mom. You're not supporting Portland. Let's go. I actually, my dad is a massive Diego Valeri fan. He is, uh, you know, guy from Wichita, Kansas that did not like soccer until I got into it. He loves yeah. Diego Valeri. So he's, uh, he's on the same page with your mom. Check that out on Thursday night, MLS Idol. Let's get to the second half, guys. I just want to see the soccer, to be honest with you. Uh, and now's the time, Dom. I want to know about 2015. We're going to jump ahead just a little bit in the second half because it was slow to start. But 2015, Didier Drogba arrives. Tell me about that experience. I mean, I mean, I mean, proud to that. You know, the way Rumo was sharing there, we're going to bring like a big player. You know, we all didn't know who because um, at that time, Toronto had Jovinko, I believe, and we needed somebody special, you know. And, you know, Drogba name just came out like Drogba. And we're like, no way, come on. You're talking about the king of Chelsea, you know, this guy, the king of England, if you want to put it that way, you know, when it comes to goals and playing. So we're like, that's not going to happen. You know, you know how you know how many jerseys we have to like sell or whatever tickets we have to buy or whatever. We got to sell half of the team to get this guy. And poof, like within a couple of weeks, it's like, okay, this is real. It's happening. And we're like, holy moly, this has actually happened. I mean, me as an African, to have drug on my team, you got to think about it. It's insane. I'm a kid watching drug on TV, and this is me going to play, going to be in the same locker room with this guy. So it was like, uh, you know, like Christmas, you know, in July or something like that. But listen, he came in, you know, he, he did a great job. Just like how um, Nick was saying, um, was Michael Bradley was the head. Drogba was literally the, the captain. He was like the captain, the coach, the general manager. He he led the group, like he brought the group so together. We we were just like on the same point, you know. He he would he would take us out. He would just find a way to bring the togetherness on the team. When Drogba was on the, on the team, you could not say anything bad about any player. It, it, it everything had to be positive, you know. So we had a positive, you know, attitude at practice, and I believe. And I think everybody on the team will believe that is what brought us, you know, that far. That togetherness that Drogba brought on the team, you know, brought us this far. I mean, there's also a reason why when he left, obviously the group wasn't the same. But, um, you know, when he left, we didn't find the same core by the end of the day. That's what happens to team sometimes. You know, you make it sometimes, you know, you get disconnected. And uh, that's what happened. By the end of the day, Drogba was, was a big factor in, in bringing everybody together, you know, for us to go forward. A wonderful year or so. I love that from Marco Donadell in just like a petty way. He knows what's coming. He throws his arm out. <laughs> He's playing games. <laughs> Based on yeah, the I remember. Games, it, you know, that was in the locker room. to most stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to say, that's that's not even like vintage Donadell, I would say. Him and Bernadello, yeah, it, yeesh. Yeah. In the locker room, we kept talking like, 
guys, we need one goal. Because again, you know, our game plan was obviously, we knew when we were, if we sit, you guys couldn't break us because we, we, we had that call, we were there. So in the locker room, we just kept saying, guys, we just need one goal, one goal, one goal. That's all that we kept saying. That, that, was, that was our locker room talk, one goal, one goal, one more goal, one more goal. And then, you know, obviously when that happened, we were like, yes, you know, we got this. Again, the rest is history, but, you know, from the locker room, we're, all we're thinking was one more goal, one more goal, one more goal. I love that you say the rest is history almost. After it is history. history. You can't change what happened, you know. <laughs> I'm but... just messing with you. I'm just messing This was it. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just, there's offside, offsides, offsides. Offside. Yeah, I didn't touch the ball. <laughs> can, can we have a rewind on that goal? Like, is we're it possible to... Replay. Are you we trying need... to claim this right now, Dom? It looks like you're trying to no. claim this one. What? No. If I, you just I ran to the corner. You it. just jumped on the ground. So... I went oh, to no, help my teammate. Oh, no, Is that a problem? Okay, okay. okay. Just make it. You sure. see that? <laughs> you, you, uh, if, if, Steve, if you, you think VAR would have caught his back? You think, really? Back. Not for sure. Are you Not sure, sure though? I think it goes off the back of my heel. Let's see. So if if they don't consider oh. it a back pass, because because Piotti's on, but when he shoots that, look at Dom screening me. So so yeah. was that was that like trying to block? So that's that is like me trying to. In yeah, TDR, you're in offside you're position. Trying... You're interfering uh, the play, so it's it should be called. But I don't think they had VAR at this time, so. No, the question is, any... uh, I'm trying to think. I think it, it goes off it's... my back heel right yeah, here. Yeah, that's the thing that that would because it goes off. Nick. Well, so you didn't I have time it's... to react though. That's the thing. So, I agree. I can't. The question yeah. is, did he, he, shot did he play the ball? Yeah. The question is, did and he intentionally he play it? Yeah, it's tough. Those are like that's where when I do instant replay and I'm I'm basically trying to judge and referees on the second look with as many replays as i want like going in pausing yeah. and zooming in i'm like oh my god i would never want to do this job it sounds just awful to have the pressure <laughs> to get that right in that moment <laughs> guys at this point we were like we got you guys you know we had it and and because that was what like i said everybody was like one more go and when we had it we we're like yep that is it you know i mean and the idea so was do changes. not change it's insane I think I oh, do not but, foul. Jo, do not foul where Jovinko will get it. Like, don't foul on top of the box. That was it. Don't foul on top of the box. Stay in tight. Get a goal, and that is it. Don't foul for Jovinko to get a free kick. I think I was. I was just. I was like, how is this possible? <laughs> how could they have come right? back? How could this be another lead change? How could we be down again? Like, this is unbelievable. But also, I was like, we got forty minutes to to score a goal, and I believe that we'll get it done. And, and with all that craziness, it, the, I mean, the emotional roller coaster yeah. ride going down multiple goals. Then you're like, all right, we got up. And then you're going down multiple goals. And then it's like, what's going I on? I think here? if the series was in Montreal, I think it would, you know, who knows what would happen, but I think it would be a lot tougher. But being yeah. at home, yeah. I feel like just, you know, the crowd was so into it from minute one. Even when we went down, even when we gave up goals, they would get louder. And I feel like that really, uh, you know, that pushed us over the edge. Yeah, you, you guys had the crowd, like, you know, really into this whole thing, you know. And, and I think I'll, I'll give you guys all that respect for that. The crowd, like, did a great job. Because, I mean, 2015, we played in Azteca. And it was loud. And we, we did it, it didn't even, like, fade us like that, you know. But at this point, you know, I think you guys were just, you guys just knew, you know, you guys just had it. You could tell, you know, we we're confident, but the fans, you know, kind of made it possible for you guys, you know, to get there. Um, but listen, Again, it is what I think it is. It's a long I actually time thought to we had stall, it. Yeah. You know, the, the amount of pressure. Yeah. I mean, for... have you seen any, not saying you guys are Barcelona, have you seen any other team play Barca? They start from minute zero. You know what I'm saying? That is how it is. We yeah. we had to find a way to just stall no matter what. We we just had to break you guys from you know everything that you had. That was it, right? Offside. Yeah. Yeah, it's I tough. I, guys. I, mean, I, I was just. You're definitely just trying to get in to play the ball. Like, there's no doubt about that. Was the touch itself intentional? No, but you're intentionally yeah. trying to get in there and get a piece of the ball. So that's where I can understand the call. And also, come on. Listen, I, 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 I was just, I was just yeah. trying to use my, um, my workout, you know, gym poster just to get in front of Steven. That was. I, like, I seen you in the gym. You do one workout. You go like this. <laughs> you do, you're working triceps, all triceps, triceps, all day. No, that's it. You do triceps and you leave. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I gotta do what I gotta do, man. Hey, your arms look great. Pool man. workout. They yeah. look fantastic. Thank you. 
friend. <laughs> Nick, uh, you were you were in Toronto since 2014, I believe. Tell me yeah. how you saw oh. it all kind of evolve up to this point, like the the fan base, oh, the team, uh, the Nick, project. You, see that? you didn't get by me I, though. Bro, I made you tell. He like, said he was just trying like to hold you to the top of the 18, say. man. I said I would, I, would dro- I would drop all the way to the 18. You never got by me. It's no uh, problem. Excuse you. You didn't get by me there. At this point, at this point, you we did had turn me plans, around so. three times, but you didn't get by me. See, I'm still with you. <laughs> and Anywho, yeah, the project it was it was actually pretty cool to to see things unfold. So my first year, um, obviously Ryan Nelson was the coach, Stevie Caldwell was the captain, um, and we had Jermaine Defoe, Michael, um, and you could see that the team, you know, Toronto is really, you know, starting to put money into the team in a, in a real way um, and bring guys that were going to, you know, win an MLS Cup. Um, and they were committed to that. And so you kind of saw that um, unfold in the first year. And obviously Ryan Nelson got fired and Greg Vanny got uh, the last 10 games of the year um, to, you know, as as coach and so we didn't win i think we won two games we missed out on the no i think I, I, I think i think we, we we won one game and lost like literally every one of the yeah. game we, we could have made the playoffs we had like two games in hand and everything i remember that real well we, yeah yeah we, we, kind yeah, of we were i think that. we were second yeah but we had lost like four games in a row and then ryan nelson got fired or something like that we were starting to go in a bad way at, at the halfway point when jermaine didn't make the world cup um, he kind of switched off a little bit, and it was kind of tough to, um, to, get, to get him to you know, come, back. come back from that. And then yeah. uh, in terms of, you know, Greg took, took the role and started trying to make the team his own. Um, yeah, and then the next year, Michael's the captain. Um, you know, we have a better sense of style. We played a 4-4-2 diamond, and we scored a bunch of goals, but we left ourselves a little bit open in the back. Um, 2016, you know, uh, we bring more veterans in, guys who have been around the league, who have done it um, defensively, Drew Moore, uh, Steven, you know, um, and midfielders that, you know, like Will Johnson, guys that have been around the league who have won championships, have been in big moments. I think, I think was this was the goal, no? Yeah. Yeah. Get ready. Or Hagman. Boom. Oof. Should Boom. have just dunk it. Was that the I Zion knew, celebration I, too? There's a little bit of that. There I don't too, even know yeah. what I celebrate. I think I just did a fist up in the air because I honestly don't remember what happened after I saw the ball go so, in the middle. Blackout. So, so not Nick, like Wando Nick, blackout, but Nick, if you, if you look what? at the time, you know it was a 68 minute, right? So, like I was telling you, yeah. if we had kept the score sheet by the 70th minute, we had a game plan. So when yeah. when this went down, I think it was like. Oh my God! You know, we just gotta like figure things out. It was just like all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Because it yeah. wasn't a tie game anymore. So we had a plan on the 70th minute, and everybody knew that we we had a system. And when that game that game just came like before that, it kind of like you know, just away. It, it kind of twi- it kind of tweaked it, everything. Because if you watch, we made a substitution literally right a couple of minutes from that, and and that was that was the whole plan. That was the whole substitution to come in and, and get it done. So. It was at this point. It was just like you guys were. The rest running is all history, over us. right? <laughs> yeah, the rest is history. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what were you thinking, Nick, when you saw that ball float up? Though, like you have, I was like, I'm the only person bit. that is gonna get this ball. You know, as I see it, you know, that wasn't like a specific play. Where the play was for yeah, Justin was... to get around, but at once there, we were just kind of like, whoever gets the ball. Once I saw it floated, that's my favorite ball. Floated up there, and I'm just going to jump as high as I can, and I knew that I was going to be the only one that was going to get to it at that moment. It was just Who's about licking, licking the right their chops spot. more? You or uh, J-Mo on that one? He's looking in the box like, oh, man, there's so many options. I just got this. Chip this perfectly yeah. in the middle. Or you yeah. when he chips it, and you're like, oh, man, this is mine. I mean, there were a lot of options for him. I mean, he just had to lift it. I think I, I when I saw the ball go up, I was like, "This is mine. It's done." Get, I'm get out of the way. This. It yeah, was. I just needed to put back. it because I'm pretty far back. I'm pretty far out. I knew I was like somewhere between like the 18 and the the the, pe- the penalty spot, or like right on the penalty spot. And so I know I had to get it into a corner. Otherwise, like it's it's a, a savable ball, um, and get enough power on it. And yeah, yeah, once it happened, I was just like, "Oh my gosh." It was it was funny because it was a long year for me because I was uh, I at the beginning of the year I was loaned out to 
TFC two for a bit, and it took me a while to, you know, I got a couple games here and there, and it wasn't until like the last uh, four or five games of the season that I found my spot when we we switched to a three five two and found my spot on the left side. Um, so you know, for that that goal to be in that big moment, um, you know, was kind of special for me, um, just for a long year. Yeah, it's your first one since twenty fourteen, yeah. Yeah, first one since twenty fourteen. I think at that point we were so much under pressure we, were, we even forgot about playing. Um, we, you know, we forgot about knocking balls. You know, all we just wanted to do was get the ball out because the crowd was so into it. Everything was just yeah slowly like you know falling apart. The crazy thing on the goal the was like the Viking clap that they, the Viking clap they started doing the Viking clap. And oh really? During the goal? Happening. And it was like right at the end of the Viking clap was when I when I scored and it was like. It was, it was oh, that is not a almost. foul. Come foul, on, man. Sure. Really? Foul. Lord. That was a good plan. Guy. By the way, just, he's a just good foul player. Us. He's, uh, <laughs> I think he's in France right now. Amazing, man. He's one of... Let's watch it again. Yep, all ball. Yeah. What? Um, where are your glasses? Where are your glasses? <laughs> So wait, what's your what's your game plan now? At, at yeah, with twenty minutes I, uh, left of the game, I, I think I think right now, to be honest, and, and I, I speak for myself. I mean, obviously, it yeah, was yeah, like for sure, for sure. We, we just gotta we, we just gotta you know compose ourselves. But then everything was just like you know how like in your head you want to compose yourself, but at the back of your mind, the crowd was just like you know into it. Like we knew you guys had momentum. All we were just trying to see if we could just get a goal back. You know. Um, you know, all the coaches were screaming, saying, just one more go, one more go, one more go, just like how we, we try to say in the locker room. Um, but listen, at, at that point, I think you guys knew it. And, and this was a change that was supposed to happen prior before. Prior before. We we're supposed to come in, yeah, comes, so the big man will buddy. probably just, the big man will sit there and then collect everything, and then we kind of open. So, you know, that, that was the plan. So, Anyway, it's just all over the place. At this point, it was just... For sure. I mean, so, Drogba, was, that, Dro that Dro was Drogba would have come in, you know, hold the ball for us up top, you know, and then yeah, for just, sure. you know. I think it was early, maybe it was, yeah, earlier that year, he, it was, we were winning the, the, a Canadian Cup match. We were winning 4 nothing. Drugba comes on in the 85th minute, and scores a goal and assists, and you know he can in in five minutes, and so I think there was a little nervousness in our mind that you know he could make something out of nothing. I want to believe I want to believe at this point too. Um, so the idea was when it was two two, I think we were supposed to switch to um, your your position like a three five two to match you guys literally one on one in everything that you guys do. Yeah. So we can just finish the game off. Um, you know, that was yeah. one of the plan too. So I think it was Danny Toya was supposed to bring Danny Toya in and we go to a, a third five two literally and then switch with you guys, you know, mano a mano. Um or bring Drogba in and then we just run off him. So we had a game plan the seventieth minute. But like I said, the goal literally came like the sixtieth minute, we kind of like distracted everything and you guys had momentum and it was just I mean at this point, let's be honest, it, it was all you guys. It was all you guys. We were just trying to see if we could just get back in the game. And that's the legend of Eric Haglund, just coming in, just throw the game plans in the trash, baby. When you see Nick <laughs> on a set piece and that ball gets floated, he's that's hanging right. on the rim. He didn't have a he didn't have a flu, but he coulda, he would have done it. <laughs> he had he had one, he still would have done that. Yeah, so, still would have right. happened. It still would have happened. <laughs> okay, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Nick, was this one of the best atmospheres though that you played in, as far as you 100%. know, thirty six thousand fans, so they opened it up more than capacity yeah. the light drizzle i think played effect and then the smoke yeah. you know yeah uh, i just sure. think it was kind of meant to be with, with yeah. all that and it's, definitely it was incredible definitely. play that night what are the things yeah. outside of like you mentioned the smoke and sort of the drizzle what are the things on the field outside of the crowd itself obviously the energy that they're bringing and the size that sort of up an occasion for you are there things like that where it's like oh this lighting is better or you know, when it rains and it's a little slick, that that hypes things up a little bit. Definitely, sure. when it's night, a little being slick. At night, the games at night are something special. Under the lights, there's just something special about that. Yeah, there is, and um, 
for me too it's not even about the rain it's about, it's about the weather like when it hits if it's like 60 degrees for me it's like perfect you know yeah. you could just you know, yeah. run, like, run you know, for days said, run for days you know afternoon games that was tough first of all eating is a problem you wouldn't know what to eat if it's if it's at a one o'clock game you don't know if you want to eat breakfast or you want to eat lunch you know kind of something like that but i mean uh, weather wise i would say if it's somewhere 60 if it's cool you know rain or not but you know that weather is just like you can just run all day and, and to me that's like the best atmosphere i want to play when i'm playing and i think the i mean it's a derby i think that when you're playing your your rival and the game is bigger the pressure's on the margin for error is less uh, you know, those are the games that feel special. That feels like every moment counts. Every time you move matters. Um, and you know, when things go well, it feels that much more important and more. You know, the feeling of satisfaction. Did Did we have a red card in this game? Oh no. No. Oh, uh, I yeah, guess I'm thinking. Um, as well. We need some. You need. Some I, I guess I'm thinking. Canadian Cup. Oh, you see, the ref was all over you guys. You know. If it was Jovinko or Michael Bradley, he would have called it. They kicked Drogba, he didn't say anything. I'm like, all right, stay over here. Don't do anything right now. I was actually surprised. <laughs> Drogba was a little bit tame that game. He, didn't I he have agree. some issues coming into the end of the year, Dom? I remember I he was... wasn't playing as much. There was like a physical thing going on with him or... Yeah, he had, he had a foot injury, uh, I believe, at that time. So he was nursing a foot in injury then. So he was, like, gradually coming into... Uh, I remember him playing against New York. That was the first game that he came back from, uh, from a foot injury. Um, so uh, that's what happened. I saw you earlier. Listen, this... he... Go ahead. Sorry? No, no, I was going to say Steven's talking about trying to stay in front of people. I saw you make that run, like, three minutes ago, Steven. And have to turn around and be like, "Oh crap!" Just book, just book it back. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, my adrenaline was going because we kind of had that fifty-fifty with Onyango, and we kind of had a break, and I just beeline it down the middle, and you know, I think it's uh, Seba that turns the ball over, and I'm almost like, "Piotti's open, get back." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if I run forward too many more times. Ooh, I think that should have been a. Cut on you, you kind of like step on a younger's feet or something. Uh, you you want cards everywhere. Like, <laughs> you know? Please, more I mean, cards. More cards. He's trying, to, he's trying to protect his boy, all right? Cards, uh, cards for everyone on Toronto. Yeah. Hey, I, shoot, that should have happened, I man. Think, I don't think we had one card. We played clean. I don't think. No, yeah, I, I definitely listen, think Montreal, Montreal had more fouls, 100%. Game at, at this point, at this point, Ooh, you guys, just, you guys. Let me, let me, hold on, let me, let me, let me check you on that one because Toronto FC had seventeen to sixteen. But uh, if you count yellow you. cards, then it's eighteen. So I mean, wait, so we yeah, fouled more? No, they fouled more with yellow cards. I tried to yeah. fact check you, and then I forgot about the yellow cards. Thank so you. now look at me. I'm, I'm out here muting you. my microphone and during my intro. Yeah. I'm just <laughs> <bibbing> <laughs> at this up, point, man. at this point, it was like, how is that a foul? I mean, listen, like I said, I, 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 at this point, you guys, you guys had it. Like the crowd was behind you. Anytime you guys, you know, get past the half line, it was just yeah. like screaming. So, you know, you definitely Let's felt see. that on the field. Foul. I think for sure this is a foul. Let's see. I don't know if it was. He kicked I, think it. I think he got a ball. I soon, I soon got the ball right there, you know. But anyway. No harm, no foul, though. We don't score here. The, the, this is where we're like, no, don't do it. Because you're like, Jovinko, 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 Jovinko. You know? <laughs> At this point, you just yeah, try man. not to. The legend of Jovinko atop the box is a it's a long one. And it normally ends with the ball in the back of the net. Where was Seba's spot? Like, where was it for you guys if you saw a foul in a certain spot that you were just like, oh, done? Any, anywhere near the 18. <laughs> this guy was really? ridiculous. I would say, I would say kicks. if you do, like, five yards in towards the middle of the field from here that's it but honestly anywhere <laughs> anywhere the goal i've seen him from 40 uh, 40 yards record. out against philly <laughs> yeah i mean not not to take that away from him drug bar used to like have a way of dinging the ball you know he will just I, like he, he has a way he will count one two three that like third person take like two step back and then angle himself in such a way and just move and ding it, go. 
I, I don't know how they do it. Like I said, those guys are blessed, you know, to have all those talent. You know, Jovinko, him. But boy, oh boy, a ball in front of the box, you you know, you just place the ball there. They have a way of kicking it, and it's it's just mind blowing. Sometimes you wonder why you can't do certain things like that. You know, that shows you the talent is different. What is that? Is that just like repetition ball striking? Is that just, I'm just, na this is naturally something that I'm just extremely good at, whether it's like, I don't know, hand-eye coordination, foot-eye coordination. Like, what is it that makes those guys so special in their technique? Well, well he had a system. Like I said, Drogba will, will have a count. From, from what I know, he will have a count, you know, count a third person, you know, take like two or three steps back and angle himself in such a way to hit it. So I, I'm, I'm, I want to guess maybe he, he's done that so many times, so he's comfortable with that. But other than that, I think he's just a pure talent when it comes to, you know, wow. taking free kicks. You know, he's done that so many times and uh, he has he just has a way of doing it. He's faking it. Get up. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> see it right there. Look at that. Oh, guess what? He's fine. Magic. Of course. I mean, we just don't <laughs> want to delay the game. That's all. You know? I know. And we were trying to delay the game. <laughs> yeah. See, so we're, we're we went right through it. Yeah. That was yeah. a yellow, right? Yeah, seven feet you? are so small that the when they the way they wrap around what, the ball what, gets this crazy. Dip what was his shoe size again? Size six or something like, like that? Like five. Five? I but think it's that is ridiculous. And, and, and five Ruby, or that's six. what I was I'm gonna say. There's it. science behind it. Like guys' flexibility for their ankle, the, their shoe size. You know, obviously it's it's natural, but the guys yeah. that already have that natural ability and then they practice even more. I think it's a little combination of both because, yeah, Sebo's foot was tiny, and so he's able to hit the ball with the sweet spot almost every time. Every time, and any way he wants it too. Yeah. yeah he was good, man. Yeah. Anytime we Beta, play, we just we just. There. I don't so know why I'm Armando. looking. I'm like, get back. <laughs> yeah, talk to Armando about that pass there. It's like, come on, man, come on. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, hold on. I'm like, every time I ran forward, I'm like, turn around, sprint back. Yeah, other yeah, teams you can do it more often than not, but with Piotti, it's like just don't go too far away from him. Yeah, He's too good. Yo, that guy will like I practice right. Kid you not, he would do certain things or score certain goals from certain angles or just dribble you, and you'd be like, "How is he doing it? Like, how is this possible?" You know what I'm saying? He he just had a way of knowing where to take the ball and 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 how to do it. He 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 was he, he was so his talent was just way beyond in the bath. Like sometimes you wouldn't even want to let him practice. If Piatti is hurt, you'd be like, eh, just go sit down. Just come back Saturday. You'll be fine. You'll be ready to go. That is how good he was. He, he, he was just great, you know, on the ball, with the ball. I mean, his talent is one of the best I've seen so far, you know, as a number 10. And, and, and was... I, I feel like the league, the league didn't give him that much credit, you know, um, and, and, and to me. Dang, Dom, like... I'm right here. Just call me out, bro. Just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm a I'm a like, huge Piatti guy. I listen, always try you, to get Piatti you guys in have there. you guys have some number tens that have been in the league literally like two or three years ago, and you guys are calling them out to be one of the best number ten. And you have Piatti in the league for like how long, and he's not part of that number ten group. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you got to look at it. He he serves his due. You, you know what I'm saying? It's so because to me, I, I, that too. That too. I, I feel like, Andrew, help me out over here. I feel like the league doesn't promote Canadian teams compared no, to like teams. We, oh, come on. I hear about this all the time. Not true. Like, really? Are you ask, sure? You well, there's a, there's a reason why you're hearing period, it. They said all we talked about was Sebastian Jovinko and Toronto FC and Michael and Josie. And you guys had Drogba. We blew you guys up with Drogba. I went to uh, Mexico City and I went to Montreal for the CCL final. Now, of course, that's a yeah. final, but we sent Ali Tremblay to all those CCO games. We, we had a lot of love for this Montreal team. I still do. I mean, you guys well, didn't have I a game plan after the 70th minute, but that's not on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? It's going to be like that? <laughs> I'm just messing wow. with you. Wow. I'm just messing with you. Miss. Ooh. I mean, we had two golden opportunities toss earlier. See, just yeah, missed the pass to Josie, the and then that. I mean, Toss had a really good playoff coming, series for us. He was the perfect oh, yeah. sub at the 70th minute when guy when teams were tired for him to come on. Oh and... my god! Wow! It just opened everything yeah, they, up. They, it was, yeah, this would have been it. Uh, this would have been it. This was the dagger right there. That um, what's his name? Um, Josie put in, put it up. I mean, the 
crowd is just, they feel it, right? They know it's coming. This, at this point, we're covering so much grounds. You guys were just, like I said, you, you guys, guys knew it. You guys were at this point, you guys it wasn't. It, it wasn't that. I, I, I think our the game plan that we had, we just like literally threw it out of the window. It was just like survival mode, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. No, listen, it, it's not bad. Sometimes when when your yeah. back is at a no, wall, you sure. kind of you gotta make certain decisions, and it was one just one of those decisions that we, we had to make. It was just it was tough, you know. You guys had the crowd going, we just couldn't even get our passes straight. So it was more like. Yeah. surviving mode you know so sometimes when you're in a surviving yeah, yeah, mode you just yeah. forget, you forget about all your plan you know sometimes you have you've made out plans and then when you get to the spot and something changes you forget about everything that you try to execute it's just like you know each one for himself and at, at that point you know i think we're just like a little bit in shambles right there you know yeah, so man. tired under pressure you got sebastian javinka i mean that we didn't even talk about that yeah. he just sombreroed him over there and then went yeah. and put the ball on Passant's foot in the box at this point, I think we're just hoping Drogba would just bang a goal or something. Like somebody would just score so that we can just be done. You know, we we're just hoping for a goal. How it was going to come, we didn't know. We we're just so far deep, you know, defensively. We just wanted somebody to just get out there and score. So we're just, we started hitting like long balls, stuff like that. And obviously kill time too. <laughs> Lobo must have known that. <laughs> He's gonna play the TFC with good sportsmanship right there, kicking the ball out. Uh, what a guy! <laughs> what a guy! Uh, but this is crazy, we because, you know, from 2016 final to 2017 final, I think there's four players that are different, and Oso is one of them. You know, he doesn't even start yep. uh, this game. Comes in, you know, Marky doesn't start, yeah. uh, you know, this game or the final, and. You know they were huge for us in 2017 so for sure uh, you know they were with the team obviously but you know maybe they didn't play in 2016 but 17 they meant so much to the the club yeah you, you guys you guys sort of kept that call you know and, and you added more players to it and i think yeah. i think that following year everybody knew toronto was going to be one of the team to beat obviously and um uh, guys you guys did your thing you, you got to give you know respect to management for putting that out you know keeping that call for sure putting money into i think that was it, the you biggest know, thing guys you know, have, the uh, years and there were tfc and struggle um it was there was just a lot of turnover constant turnover um, yeah. yeah the years i was there it was the same group of people with the same mentality creating the same culture you know having that certain identity that you're just going to take one day at a time get better one day at a time and all the same people and you know, the way we play here in 2016 is very different than how we played in 27 in terms of tactics. But the mentality, I feel like, is what was created when Greg came in. Um, just to, you know, if you have to play ugly, play ugly. If you want to play pretty, you can do it. Um, but when it's time, you know, when these grueling moments and when, when the game's on the line, it's, you know, those are the moments that matter. Yeah, do whatever it takes to win. That's my guy right there. Oh, Victor Cabrera out here with the Vic, Victor kick. and uh, yo, that guy. <laughs> a red card oh, waiting man. to happen. <laughs> Every play. Dom, 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 which defender on your team would step on your toes the most? Uh, I mean. On this team. On this team? Not when, not when we played again. Not when you were on my team. Because it probably would have been me. Oh. Uh, well, I mean, listen. Uh, it wasn't like step on your toes. You could just see it coming. I think it was Simon. He, he had that signature move, you know, that slide tackle. <laughs> the slide tackle. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so I think everybody knew it. So it was sort of like we at practice, we knew it was going to come. So you see that you, you either move away or you kind of like try to scoop it. Other than that, you know, you know, you, you're getting hit, you know, with a slide tackle or something like that. So um, I would say that, you know, but I'm um, listen, he was a great player. He, he won Defender of the Year, you know. He came into the league, he blew, you know, the league up with his defensive style of playing, and uh, he's, he's really good, you know, and he's going to do great. I don't know if he's still in MLS. Is he still in, uh, in, in Toronto? Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. I always thought of Laurent as like uh, some of the same mentality as Cologne with more technique. 
just like sees a 50-50 ball and just I'm going in there any means necessary. Yeah, L- Laurent, he won't shepherd. Uh, it's either I'm winning it or the guy's getting by. It's And, you know, to give him credit, he wins it a lot. Uh, but then yeah. there's times where it's like, man, you just you didn't have to jump the, in right there. Yeah, there's time where you, you kind of scratch your head a little bit. But listen, I, I'm not saying that nobody has flaws, but sometimes, you know, and one thing I like about Simon is when he gets the ball, he has that ability to ping it exactly yeah. where, you know, Oh yeah, where you want it or where you are. Like he, he has that ability to just find you and just ping that ball right there. That was one of his, you know, his, his modules that he had and he did that really well too. He could do it with his left and right. Yeah. Incredible. Montreal yeah. is trying to hold out for extra time here, survive. Toronto, what are you guys thinking at this moment in the well, game? Uh, for us, we're just trying to kill the game and go figure out our game plan because at this point, we've forgotten about the game plan, obviously. So <laughs> There's no like, game plan. I love yeah, it. at this point, it was like survival mode. So we were like, okay, wild, let's finish this. And... West out here. Yeah. yeah, so it's like, yo, let's finish this and see what we got. What are we going to do? So, are you, Toronto, are you guys thinking, time. okay, this is going to go to extra time? Or are you thinking, God, let's I, I, not yeah, do that at that possible. point, I think we were like, at the 85th minute, once we had all those opportunities and they didn't put it in the back of the net, I think we decided to step off a little and go to go to overtime um knowing that we're at home and you know there's no way goals rules anymore um yeah. and that we just oh yeah to, right you know, that, 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 that was the rule there was no away goals right oh, yeah, you guys overtime, are tired. It, it's gone yeah yeah once you get that overtime. oh this i remember like oh my god can we score from here like this would be it this would be like oh man why no? Like can I ask you something? Why, why no? Why no? Like uh, why no dye job? Why no? Why no big time haircut there, in this game? I agree. It was. You guys didn't see it. Uh, no, no, no. It was. It wasn't playing. I had a had a tiger like leopard skin uh, thing going on. Not your best lighting for that one. That's that's unfortunate. Well, uh, do you, do you use I had it. I had it. I use I use the same guy. Um, his name was Thud here. Notorious. That was where I used to go. Notorious haircut, and um, you know we we would spend like hours, you know, over there just getting whatever design that we want, mixing the colors. Yeah, uh, I used to go through a lot just to get that hair pretty like that. It took a lot, but did it was you, for the did fans. A young, you know? Did Youngo go with you? Because <clears throat> he's got no, the full dye. I mean, he's he the, had his own hairstyles. Uh, listen, I did with, it for the fans. He's not with Notorious. I, Nah, I did it for the fans at the end of the day, and, and, and that was it. I gotta say, I'm also enjoying the the goatee here, Nick. Yeah, As the, the uh, final whistle. Of that's the last starts. time I've had that. It's kind of sad, but it's, it's, you know, I didn't do a playoff beard the following year because uh, the wife was like, "No, no, no," <laughs> and I got a lot of I got not many people complimented on my on my playoff beard a go- or playoff goatee. It's not really. It's just neck and and stash. Three two, at the end of regulation five five. That means we're going to extra time. You see in the possession, Montreal holding on. That's your game plan. Hit them on the counter. Work twice, but then Toronto comes back. All right, kick it to us whenever you want to give us extra time. We're ready. Can we just fast? Can we just fast forward it? Can we fast forward it to just when they want it and just be over it right now? (laughs) (laughs) You guys, you guys gonna make me sit through this right now? You know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Just a I little bit. Like, it's history. Uh, you gotta relive that memory all over again. Maybe if you think really hard, it'll change it. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wish, man. <laughs> uh, so at this point, we had a game plan. So the game plan was stay calm. You know, we'll get the goal just like how we fall. So at this point, we were calm. You know, we just had the three of us up top. Just do what we started from before, you know, hit them on the counter. You know, we're just going to get that um, that goal that we need. So uh, I think here it was calm, pretty That's much. That's definitely how I would try to defend Nacho Piatti. Just one arm out, try to shove him. Just push him. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just push, really push, no push. way of marking this guy. Just try to push yeah. him left, but you've even seen him. Hit His left is even left. better. That's, that's, that's not the whole thing. His left is even better. That's <laughs> crazy. He's, he's good. He's one of the best. Yeah. yeah, I feel like for us, I, re- I mean, I remember Michael coming up and being like, it's, there's no way goals, we just have to win. We just have to win. We got 30 minutes to win. 
um and i felt pretty confident like you guys were dead by the last 10 you know the last 10 minutes you guys felt like of the uh, of the regular time you felt like you didn't really have much going for you you're gonna go hope for long balls hope for something in the box um that yeah. if we just continued doing the, the things that the way we would we were doing them towards the end of the half that we'd eventually we'd break through i mean for, like i said for us it was just back to the basics do what we started, what worked for us, you know, we just, we just keep that same momentum, we just keep that, you know, sitting, wait, wait for them to come like we did, you know, the first leg and the second leg, you know, and this one just to get a goal. So like we I think we were calm high. and composed at this time. Yeah. We wanted to press high, make you guys hit long balls. Oh, you just let it go out, Dom? Yeah, come on, Dom. Uh, we, that's a set piece right on. there. We had drug by in the box. Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> you had one of the biggest toilets. You had Hasun in there. What if Hasun could oh, just yeah. throw the ball he, long? He, you, you think it wasn't part of the plan? We it was part of the plan. Huh? Set piece. <laughs> it it oh, was Oyongo. Sorry, Oyongo. Oh, yeah. So I Oyongo, feel, Oyongo like has, I, a, has I, a long I, throw. I'm surprised so we, you we all had, don't have like wristbands that are telling you. No, like, no, no. We, we, had, we had Hasun. We had Oyongo. So it was like any, any, any time we get a set piece. We gotta let it happen. Or you can go have a long throw. Yeah, yeah. You have drug, but you have a soon. I mean, I had to. It's, like I said, it's we had crazy a plan. Because you guys kind of expose yourself when you go into this plan as well. Because we know if we can break on you guys, that's a Oh, problem. come on, man. Yeah. Really? That's good positioning. Really? Just, really? Anyways. It doesn't matter. It would have been a goal kick, anyways. <laughs> but you guys love to counter. So it's like, okay, well, now we have the chance to counter on them. So uh, it's one of those, you know. One of those things, when you guys have possession, it's not the worst thing for us because we know yeah. that there will be gaps to kind of break on you guys. But, yeah, not a good start for us in overtime so far. I think you guys had two semi-chances already. Yeah, like I said, we, we were confident coming in because, you know. What a ball by pause. Yeah, right? Ooh. Oh, this is where Seba. Yeah, I, I remember this moment. Seba yeah. goes down. Oh, he got hurt. Yeah, I remember. He comes out. We he we're like, out. yeah, he, he did, he did, he did come out. He did come out. We we're like, okay, yes, yeah. one man down, you know, yes. Seba is up, you know. I think it was, it was just like Toronto against. Um, I'm talking about NBA when um, KD got hurt, and sort of like the crowd was like excited, but at the same time, everybody was like, come on, you know, calm down, you know, it's not like that. It was like Seba was down, like, yes, he's down, you know, that's a good thing. We have one of their best players up, so this is gonna go well for us, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember this this moment just being like, oh no, oh no, like the best yeah, player in the like, league, the guy that the kind of the magic man, because you're also thinking ahead to MLS Cup potentially, hoping it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I was. I mean, I was like, oh man, I can't believe he's going out, but I felt like the momentum was in our was for us, and so I wasn't like. I was worried, obviously. This is a guy that's super important to our team and what we do. But at the same time, I felt like they were – they. to me, it felt like they were tired and that we were, you know, we were knocking on the door for a bit that, you know, we have someone fresh coming in. Who knows what's going to happen? I think that's the biggest thing. Someone fresh coming in with legs that, you know, runs – for for the, the players around him, I think I think Sebo is one of those he guys where he doesn't necessarily him. run a lot, but when he got the ball, he was magical. So knowing someone else is coming in that has fresh legs, that's going to do a little bit of the dirty work. I think kind of uh, benefited us in this certain match. To go to what you're saying about depth in this team and building it up, I mean, nice to, nice to have Ben Washeru to come off the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that's who comes. You want in. Yeah, you want to talk yeah. about class? That guy is pure yeah. class. A consummate professional. This guy. <laughs> oh, I so definitely good. want. I mean, I, I'm I'm among the uh, demographic that wants as many Benoit Cheru stories as you have. So, feel free to hold court on Benoit Cheru. Really? We made him so close. No, just yeah. t t tell me about him. I, I mean, he was a good player, but I mean, t tell me about him. In training, Great this guy. guy made so many people like a ridiculous <laughs> amount of people, like just for fun. Like this man knew exactly where your body was going to be. Just. Whoop, and even like well, the, the thing that he's not quite, you know, was coming too, and they couldn't stop it. Yeah. 
Oh really? The number of times, the number of times him and Michael would get into it during training. Like, oh, because you chat, you you met Mike, Michael and you love it. Yeah, and it was like a good a good <laughs> challenge in, in training all the time. It wouldn't yeah. get him all the time, but he'd definitely try. Yeah, Ben Ben Wall, ben Wall was, was actually uh, the guy I would it, I would warm up with. We would go into this back hallway before every like we any any stadium we'd find. We would go to oh, a hallway right. and we would just hit a small ball back and forth, two touch the whole time, like. Benoit Cheru, a legend in Marseille, is just hanging out with Air Haglin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, he cared so much about the, the guys that were, you know, not the, the, you know, stars of the team, but guys that, uh, you know, everyone. Oh, he should have gone team, down over there. The guys that, the role players oh, and everyone. On. And so, for him, he was, like, kind of the captain of the, the you know, the reserve squad to the end of, at the end of the year. And, That's dope. You know, you know, just a guy that you know cares about football loves football um and just did exactly what he was told and fought and never never groaned never moaned you know just always had a smile on his face and took care of everyone and you know i have utmost respect for him he was he, he was one of those guys every morning when you said hi to it generally say hi back. felt like he was no no he <laughs> was like so polite and like he really generally seemed like he cared yeah like, Ben Wall was just pure class. Love that guy. Also, little fat. Oh, wait. Let's watch. Ooh, let's, there it let's is. Watch him, let's watch him finish, finish the beautiful header. So, it, it ended up being a, a, a blessing in disguise. You know, like, Jovinko coming out. We're thinking, oh, this is good for us. And then this guy came in and just scored. And it's like... Beta, I, I haven't I, seen... I, the thing that's funny, one, Ben Wall doesn't use his head very often. Like, he prefers really? to try and take it down with his foot. Also, I don't see Beta use his left foot very often, so it's two things that just don't <laughs> normally happen in one day. That happened that, that, happened that day. Moment. <laughs> it, it's funny because I was so gassed. I'm like, I am not going down this line right now. Oh. <laughs> and, and I knew I had numbers, so I'm like, let me just try to step over and see if I can get a little space. And That's thank God ball. Benoit ran over there. Uh, I mean, it, 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 this ball, obviously, I mean, it was a goal, but... You know, we, we we easily defend this ball all the time and you know, out of the box, you know, because we had guys who could just put their head on the ball as soon as uh, we had Simon. So normally, balls like that, we didn't care. We, we just had to, like, stop you guys from shooting from outside the box, stuff like that. So for that to also happen, it was like, I, I think at this, at this point we knew it. So we, we kind of tried to, like, throw numbers up front, you know, see if we could just get a goal, whatever. At this point, it was just like, Forget about what we just started again. Numbers up. <laughs> the game Put you in the back. Out the window again. <laughs> Let me check my, like... uh, my arm pad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yellow, well, we got pen. Yeah. Yellow, it, was, it, was like, it was like no play. No play. Page no play. 17. Everybody, Page 17. everybody, everybody get up. Everybody just go up. Just go up. Yeah. Throw numbers up. Oh, uh, oh. throw numbers yellow, up. Yellow's on the headset. <laughs> new <Yeah>. new <laughs> game plan. <laughs> this one is blank. I don't see anything on this game. <laughs> yeah. At this point, you guys were defending, and I think we were just like, you only had Josie, who was a beast, by the way. He's still a yeah. beast, man. That guy, that guy, this, he this just turn and, and cross. Oh, beautiful. Dagger and right knew, there. And you knew Ricketts would make the run, too. You just, like, he for was sure. going to, if anything, he was yeah, going to sell out for the but, but look at it. He was able to hold guys off, you know, just, like I said, and that the, the two goals just came just back to back, and it was, I mean, at this point, we're just about to just finishing the game. You know, yeah, that, I think so, at that point you, we kind of knew. All right, it's over. Like, so, so is it over? I'm um, Andrew. Can we just click off? We're done? No, no, you got to <laughs> it. We actually got the we have the celebrations queued up uh, on repeat. So yeah, we're just gonna roll oh, over right another couple over. hours. Oh lord. Yeah, I, know. So, I mean, for me, Josie I mean, right here, he celebrates like he scores. By the way, if you want to talk about something terrifying, when Josie scores and he's running at you, yeah. it's the most D terrifying thing. You're just like, <laughs> don't get out of the way. Just get out of the way. That's all you're thinking. Look at him. Like, it's, it's like it's like a, a linebacker is coming at John? you right there, right? Yeah, it looks like Conway. Yeah, that's John, John Conway that, was just if that's like anyone else besides Conway, Conway's like 6'6 six, six and can hold him. But anyone else, you're done for. That's why you send yeah. Conway to the front, man. You just pull him off the bench and throw him out there. You just exactly take, take this contact, hit. man. God. Yeah, Josie in the playoffs is a is a sight to behold, man. He. Mm. Yeah, I, I would give him Some that. He best, can hold the ball the pretty good. He he is like one of the, you no, know, probably maybe arguably the best 
number nine, like a target nine, you know, if you, if you want to ask for in the league, you know, he, he does that really oh, yeah. well. Another guy that used to do that too, um, I think it's Hasley. He used to play for uh, Vancouver. Eric Hasley. Um, yeah, he was, he was, he was great like that too. You know, he, that guy was like that piece. He could hold the ball really well and Josie is, is one of those. Uh, I mean, I, I have, I have played long and I've seen guys that can do that. And those are the two guys that I've seen that does that really well, you know? I and mean, the timing as big of this as Josie, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, as big as Josie is, he prefers the ball to his feet. You know what? He really? doesn't want to like get into oh, yeah. physical battles. He prefers to get the ball what? to his feet, connect. Yeah, hundred percent. Now, obviously, he can do it. He can turn people, but he prefers balls to his feet, tiki taka. And obviously, when when you're in playoffs and the mo, you know, he just goes into beast mode, which he can pull off at any moment. But he's a, he's you know he's multifaceted. He can do whatever. Did you guys know yeah. Toronto that, that you were going to host MLS Cup right now? Like I'm trying to think back on the timing of the playoffs that year, and yeah. who was I left. I think we knew if we won, we'd be hosting. Yeah, because it was the but Sounders. Yeah, and the Sounders. Yeah, Seattle was, was like Sounders and Houston, one. I think. And was Dallas. it this year or was that the year after? And Dallas was Dallas. It was Dallas. Yeah. Dallas was Shield winners. So had they won, they would have hosted. But I'm just looking at the timing yeah, no, here. It, it, no, no, it was in Seattle for sure because uh, we're both oh, looking no, you, at it that way. It was the Rapids. Yeah. Yeah, it was the Rapids. The who? The Rapids. But you guys were playing this like three days after their second leg. So you already knew that the Sounders were through. Yeah. I remember we, we, we made plans, you know, if, if we won this one, Seattle and everything, we, we had, you know, flight, you know, when to leave, stuff like that. Because, I mean, we, 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 you, you prepare like assuming you were going to win the game, obviously. So we had plans. This was a schedule, you know, we go to Seattle, yada, yada, yada. At this point, Seattle was out. It was just like, what are we going to do? I think you guys just sat, you guys just, just had like five guys sitting in the back. I remember Drew Moore, I was talking to Drew, it's like, it was like, yeah, good luck next year. And I remember telling Drew, I'm like, you better win this one. I'm like, for, for you know, for this, I'm like, you better win this one. And of course you guys blew it, so whatever. We didn't, we didn't, we tied. And lost huh? <laughs> okay, so you blew it. Thank you very hey, much, Nick. Hey, they Dom, didn't have a shot gave, on we goal. We gave up this many shots on goal, all right? <laughs> and we lost. <laughs> Uh, and we ties. lost that now. <laughs> Guys. That's listen. why defense defense ch ties championships. Don <laughs> waited till the very end. He knew he had he knew he had his own. I know he knew card. exactly what I, he was doing. I, 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 I have it in my hand, man. He had I, it in his game plan. He was like, oh, okay, 110th <laughs> minute. Oh, I'm going to bring up that they lost after this. <laughs> uh, no, I, I remember that day when you guys were playing Seattle. I was like, I'm not gonna watch it. I didn't watch it because I, obviously I was so mad, you know, about everything. And then I saw on Twitter that you know you guys lost some PKs, and I remember giving a fist bump, like, you know, yeah. I mean, as, as a guy from Montreal, of course I'm happy, you know, you guys didn't win, because like, you know, so yeah, something like that. But I will I was say, really torn with that on result, whether to... go, go ahead, Nick. I was gonna say I was very torn on whether. Uh... I wanted you to win CONCACAF. I'll just say that. Ultimately, I want MLS Club to win CONCACAF, but I what? sure wow. want you to be the last team to do it. <laughs> yep, that's every Toronto fan. So, <laughs> nothing new to me. No, but I was going to say, with the result of this year in the finals, I think that's what drove us for having such an incredible 2017. So, as much as I would have loved to have won this year, um, I don't know if we would have had that type of year in 17 if we didn't lose in the finals mm -hmm. against Seattle. Definitely. Yeah, and I think, you know, like I said, your management also saw the kind of team that you guys have and they, they kind of like really pushed and worked on it, you know, brought in one or two pieces that kind of really helped, you know, got to give them credit yeah. for that. Uh, yeah. but, but you guys, you Greg, guys, Greg I think you guys, yeah. Greg instilled this style of play within us in 2017 to, to play, to go for it, to not be afraid, you know, um, to play out of the back, keep the ball. Uh, 
you know that and that was we still played the three five two which started here but we played three five two very differently and so um yeah yeah i know i think i think i think, I think toronto made three landed. five two three five two play like one of you know you guys made it your thing like anytime you play against toronto you have to adjust you know you have to like either play a three five two two deal with it or find a way to to you know basically defend you guys and you guys you guys literally from from this play that three five two um you know football really well i think i think you guys kind of mastered the whole you know style about it and then awesome. uh, how did you miss that yeah <laughs> so you know, he he also he became you went there you know he developed to, to a great player i give him that yeah also yeah, drive it... after this uh after the finals loss man yeah. i remember seeing this guy in the gym every day right when we lost and i'm like you just sensed it and he was gonna have a breakout year and i think 17 was really good and 18 was unbelievable for him um yeah so you just sensed it you know just taking it upon himself to get that much better and work that much harder at this point i think we're just just trying to give everything that we got and you guys were trying not to give Air anything. Haglin with the clear. Yeah, yeah, me and me and Drew, me and Drew switched positions at this point. I went to center of the back, center of the back three. My job was just to hit the ball. And out. we had this every throw in, no long nonsense, ball. long one. Just get it out, I. Right? Oh, I thought it was we, a PK. Yeah. So handball via. Yeah. Push it out. <laughs> You'd still be down. I did know. you know it at this point, Dom? I think within, no. Within no, no, no. Did I, you know that Didier was gone? Did you know this was going to be it? Drug uh, oh, I seen leaving the team. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe there were. I mean, listen, there were rumors here and there. You know, like this would be his last year. Uh, but you know, sometimes things always change. But there was there were, there were rumors here and there. Probably going to be it. Uh, so. Really, What's your favorite, like as we wait for the, the clock to run out here, what's your favorite Drogba memory? Like you said, it it was huge for you as an African just to have this legend in the team. Um, so memory on the field. Uh, off the field, memories. on the field, whatever whatever really stands out to you. It could be off yeah, the field. Yeah. Uh, uh, on the field was um, against uh, Colorado. I think, I think, you know, he scored from long free kick. You know, I think that even pushed us to the playoffs. I mean, that game, you know how it is playing in Colorado, you can't even breathe, you know, the air is so thin, it was just right there. And we had like no chance in that game and Drogba just out of nowhere, just hit like a long free kick, you know, push us, you know, obviously um, pushing playoffs. And then off the field um, against Orlando, it was so hot. It was an afternoon game and I just couldn't run. Um, Anytime they give me the ball, I would just like give a back pass, give a back pass, you know, and just and then in the locker room, he he held me as like, listen, this guy is always anytime you get the ball, he's leaning back, he's scared of your pace. You just kick the ball and hit it back, go at him. Second half, literally had the ball, one two minute run, Mateo hit it, boom, go, I scored, and we ended up winning one zero, and made playoffs. I mean, he 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 kind of like coached me at that point for us to win a game. And he saw something that I did not see in the game, which, like I said, tells you the difference. You know, he, he like literally showed me the way to scoring that goal in that game. And I had no idea what I was doing wrong. And uh, that's one, one of the memories that, I, that, I, that I'll, keep it, I'll keep in mind. I remember that Colorado game. That was, yeah. that was crazy. You saw that, you saw like, that oh. goal, right? That, yeah. yeah. It was like, here he is, man. He's, he's the, people were saying, oh, does Drogba still have it? It's like, oh, no, that, he still has yeah, it. Yeah, he has it, yeah. He has it. And that free kick, I mean, who would have thought I would have gone in? It was like way out there, you know? Or well, just like that Messi free kick against Liverpool, when everybody's like, ah, it's not going to go in, it's not going to go in. And then Messi just curls it around the ball. It's just like, we didn't think it was going to go in. See how he hits that ball? The, the Perfect over the third person. On that, it's it crazy. Just dips it on the third person and it just like.
I'm just still here for Benoit Cheru being like the captain of the the role players. Like that's such a yeah. dope role for Benoit to take on. He looks like the old guy when you go play pickup basketball and you don't know who's playing. Who you're like, oh, this dude. <laughs> We got this dude. And then he's just, you can't get close to him. He's like throwing the ball over his shoulder for the assist and then just talking <laughs> trash 100%. the whole time. 100%. That's, that's exactly who he reminds me of. You look at him and he's the guy that you're like, meh. And then just balls you out <laughs> and pushes you off the court. Yeah. Pats you on the butt he's on the way off. He's also unbelievable at ping pong. He's also ridiculously good at ping pong. Really? Yeah, it was the king of the ping. He would never step on the table, but if he did once in a while, just to like shut all just, the other he guys up, everybody. he'd come yeah. in and just whoop, so clean, just like he was like playing tennis, like winds up like this, like so nice and so clean, just like you'd expect him to play. Yeah, <laughs> I had great things I'm, about him, obviously. I mean, I, I one, one time, one time, one person to say something bad about him after it's, after 2015 season. It was the off season, and I get a random phone call, a FaceTime from a number I don't even know, and I'm like, "Who is this?" I answer it. It's Benoit on a boat in France. And he's like, "Nick, how's it going? It's good to see you. I miss you." What a guy! And I'm like, "Where are you?" He's like, "Marseille. I'm on a boat. It's great. Say hi to my family." Boom. Says hi to his family, and then he just hangs up the phone. That's it. He's just a class guy. I mean, you just see the, the calmness every time he gets the ball where, you know, myself included, when we get it, we're just like, dump it. And he gets the yeah. ball, he's just like so calm, finding players. If he has to dribble a little bit, he'll dribble, connecting passes. I mean, that's just his class right there. You know, I said on and off the field. This guy, this guy was something else. Good to know. We're doing uh, greatest team of all time bracket on extra time right now. Just you know, trying to trying to talk about something while this is happening, right? Trying to knock out <laughs> some time. And it's right now, favorite. I think 2017 Toronto FC is the favorite. Like you guys are obviously going to be in the final, and I think probably are the team that will win it. Who would you guys say from your time in MLS is the best team you'd have been on or, or played against? I mean, I would say 2017, uh, Toronto is is the best, but I also remember the 2014 Galaxy. I think that's who you're playing in this round. It'll be 2014 Galaxy against 2017 Toronto. And the other side, I'm pretty sure, is going to be 2019 LAFC and 2018 Atlanta. Unless, I mean, yeah. look, D- I mean, 98 I, I, and 97 I, DC are on that side too, so it's tough, but. I, I, I was going to say, you know, I'll go way back. Houston, you had Brian Chain, you had Steve Holden, you had uh, Jeff Cameron. That was a D-Row. tough team too. Uh, Brad know. Davis. You, know, you had D-Row, you, um, you had, you had, say what? Yeah. yeah, you had, um, oh God, you had all these guys, man, like amazing players man i mean don kinnear could recruit don kinnear had like his team ricardo clark at that time you know, all those guys were in their prime that's when steve went to um went to um england yeah, yeah. rico went to eintracht After that. Too. and jeff yeah, a couple so, of years like eight or nine maybe went over to stoke yeah, yeah they were you, you couldn't beat houston at that time houston had it you know what i think made 2017 uh, toronto so good is that the number of like people that were a part of it you know that had big roles to play you have guys like toss playing big minutes jay hams playing jordan hamilton playing big minutes raheem uh edwards playing big minutes like you had a lot of guys i think everyone on the team had around like six to seven games and everyone played and it didn't matter who was going in it was just like we're gonna win and it's gonna be commanding yeah i feel like that was what made 2017 so special it wasn't just like a set you know obviously we have our core michael uh seba and josie but everyone else uh you know played a big role in that and it was like a, it was real team it wasn't just a couple of superstars what'd you guys do after this game that's what i'm the trying PG, to remember the, the sometimes PG 2017 and 2016 well, yeah. we, we flew right back i remember flying, <laughs> we, we just flew right back because um I mean, that was it. Anytime we play in Toronto, we don't stay. We just, because there's always a flight every hour. So I think right after the game, we had a chat and then we just flew right back. And I remember, I mean, just going out just with my friends just to, I believe, just wash away everything. So we just like went out, 
you know. Got a, couple, got, stuff, got a cocktail at Big in Japan? <laughs> yeah, I did. I know, I know there's a little uh, something about Montreal. We had a, we have, we've had some good road trips to Montreal. Uh, of uh, course, I, Toronto FC, Sounders, as you said, this many shots for the Sounders, Steven. Uh, this many MLS still. Cups in 2016. But it would change the next uh, year. You got the trouble, got the trouble. But uh, big thanks yeah. to you guys for joining me. This, this was awesome. I had a great time just hanging out, shooting it with you, and uh, hearing some stories. Hope you're all doing well. A reminder to any coaches, GMs, scouts, people out there. Stephen Betasher and Domenico Duro are free agents. Yeah, we we signed these men. We still available. We, we, we're free agents, man. You know, call us. We, we're still waiting. <laughs> Snatch them up, we, man. <laughs> we, we still got one or two, one or two uh, years, you know, so give us a call. Uh, Friday, though, 4 p.m. Eastern, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, MLSR.com. We do it all again. David Goss, Matt Doyle. And then a couple fans on both sides of the Atlantic Cup rivalry relive uh, an old school game. I'm just loving the image here of Ben Olsen and Amado Guevara doing battle back in these days. But uh, 4 p.m. Eastern, check it out. Should be a fun time. We hope you have a great Wednesday, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week every single day on MLSsoccer.com. Noon, kick around live. 2 p.m. in player chat. And tonight, myself and Charlie Davies playing trivia on Instagram live at 7 p.m. Eastern, which is in about an hour and 10 minutes. So come check us out. Guys, thank you so much. Hope you Thanks had fun. Appreciate See you real soon, all right? It was a blast. It was a blast. Care, guys. Did you safe. enjoy it? <laughs> namaste, namaste, namaste. Hey, it's all history <laughs> now, right? It's all history now. <laughs> That's right. yeah, it's it's all the rest history. is history. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. See you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. See you guys. Stay safe. All right.